Hello everyone, I'm your host with the mostest, 8 Second Gaming, and today we're going to be taking a look at an example of how you can still crush a game and absolutely dominate, even when your teammate does something a little silly, when they attempt to throw, because whenever I post a video talking about how you can climb, or any of the rank changes, or anything kind of having to do with ranked, even slightly, I always see people talking in the comments about how, you know, they would be able to get somewhere if it wasn't for their teammates, or they could get out of gold, platinum, diamond. And blah 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 most of the time your teammates don't matter and i want to show you guys exactly how you can still do well even without a teammate now this isn't duos it is a little different but the fundamentals are still the same and i'm going to be going over just kind of exactly how you can kind of take these bring them into your own game and start to absolutely dominate with that but just quickly if you guys like these types of videos and you guys really want to start improving at apex and you want videos that go way more in depth than youtube videos do you need to check out the game leap website over there we have top level coaches, including myself, creating the best courses and guides to make you the best Apex player you can be. So if you guys want to hit Diamond, Masters, or even Predator, click the link in the description, pick yourself up a membership today, and start to actually climb. Okay, so now in this example, I'm going to kind of set the scene a little bit. So in this, yes, we are on Stormpoint. I'm playing Mad Maggie, my teammate's playing Bangalore, so it's not really the best synergy in a combination on a team comp, but you know, it, it does work for pubs but right now what happened was we were in this launch pad area there was a team up here and they rotated really fast before we could uh to get on top of this hill because you know that's where zone's going uh we did get caught out by them because like we thought we were gonna fight them they were on like the little arm of the launch pad and we wanted to kind of kill them but they just ended up running away so right now we're in a little bit of a worse spot because we do have to go up this hill they are able to hold this entire area up here and just shoot down on us so we want to get up there as quickly as we possibly can you never really want to be on low ground for extended amounts of time you always want to get up there as fast as you can so right now my bangler is going on this side of the the mountain now i could run up here and be right behind my bangalore but you never really want to be in the same spot if you're trying to be aggressive now if you were trying to be a little bit more defensive more passive if you guys were playing this in ranked and you didn't want your teammate to go down or you didn't want to go down then be right behind them being in the exact same spot is perfectly acceptable but because we're trying to fight this team and we're trying to take different angles we don't want to go up these the exact same way we want to go up kind of our own way and create a kind of a crossfire and off angle because if you guys can get different angles and you you guys can make teams kind of question where you're going to be that is always the better option because if you know if they're if they're sitting right here per se you know a little stick figure guy if they're sitting right here and their line of sight is right here and they're looking at my teammate and i happen to come up behind them if i go up like the mountain right here and i'm standing right over here and i have a nice shot at them right there they're not going to really be able to defend against that as easily as they would have been if i had just been beside my teammate so creating crossfires creating uh off angles and fights is always a fantastic idea and it's something that you guys really need to be looking for if you're trying to be a aggressive being aggressive in fights is always fantastic because if you're not on your back foot if you can push the enemies under their heels if you can keep pushing them back you're always going to have advantages and then you can press those advantages and win fights a lot easier so with this while we're trying to go up this hill uh, i do take an, an off angle here i do take a slightly longer off angle than i should have this is a little bit of a mistake by me but mistakes happen i'm not perfect but as soon as i get up the hill here my teammate does have a crack and because i took this off angle the revenant didn't expect me to be over here the Revenant probably expected me to be over here somewhere because that's where my teammate is. So because I was able to go up the side and I basically got to blindside this Revenant and I get a completely free kill because he's not expecting me to be over here. Maybe he thinks I'm a third party. Who knows? My teammate does finish him, but he does take the gravity cannon. And then my teammate also takes the gravity cannon. And I look at the map because I'm like, that's out of zone. It's round three. The zone hurts quite a bit. And if you're fighting in the zone, that's not the best idea. And with the gravity cannons, if you're landing on somebody, you have to have the animation of hitting the ground and recovering. And they just have the perfect opportunity to one clip you. So I didn't really want to go in zone. So I'm kind of, you know, talking to myself right here. And I'm like, what are you doing, buddy? What, where are you going? So I don't want to go there because that is a horrible idea. And it usually leads to death. But as soon as he leaves, I hear somebody right behind me. 
So I turn, I do get a nice one clip on this Mad Maggie, but I can't go through the gravity can now because if I do that, then I'm going to let this Mad Maggie get res and there's a Bangalore right here and everything's getting cut off. And this is where a lot of people would start to panic because their teammates in zone, they're in a Bangalore alt. They've got to fight another person. What's going on? You know, you just got to take a deep breath and just analyze the situation. So right now you need to be thinking to yourself, what do I need to do to win this? And right now, it's basically just survive this Bangalore world. Now, I know because of the position that the Mad Maggie was in, and I know that I, I had the sound cues that I'm hearing, the Bangalore is pretty close to me. So she's also going to get hit by this ultimate, uh, or she can't capitalize off it. One of the two, because of how close she is. I, I do tank a hit here, and it's not the best option, but I do have to, to get hit by it in order to kind of keep my positioning so i don't really want to commit to a fight but i want to just kind of get some information and i see the mad maggie try to crawl away i don't want to let her get away i don't want to let uh, her teammate get a potential res off with smoke if the uh the other team kind of gravity cans back i don't want to let her get information by pinging something or calling it out to her and this is something you guys need to always do if you need to, if you can get a safe thirst off like this like I, it was an easy easy one clip you should always be looking to do that because now I have that spot to play right over here. I can play it with that death box and I can get an easy armor swap. And if you can get armor swaps, you can lure teams into like a, an overconfident state. You can get like, you know, if they crack you, they say, oh my God, this is it. I'm going to push him. And then you pop up with a fresh armor in like half a second and you win the fight easily. But while we were fighting, my teammate did go down. Now I do see here that it is the Revenant, so I do know that they got a res off on the Revenant. So I know that those that team is a back to full strength, and they could be gravity canning at any time. So I need to finish this fight as fast as I possibly can. So with this, I'm trying to look around for the Bangalore. I'm trying to see where she is. I don't see her, but then I finally see her behind the street. So I'm trying to take head glitches. I'm trying to take angles on her right here. And like I said, once they crack you, then you can just do an armor swap. Unfortunately, she didn't overconfidently push me, which sucks, but I do get some nice damage off on her and I do push it down the hill. This is another kind of mistake, but kind of not at the same time, because here I wasn't able to get the kill off on the Bangalore and I lose positioning on this. If the team behind me gravity cannon back up and landed up here, I would be gate kept after this. So this is something you guys need to be paying attention to in your games if you're going to be doing something like this. You always need to be paying attention to kind of the ring and what can teams do to you. So that team probably wasn't ever going to do this, but it is a possibility. And it's just kind of reading the game. So I did feel kind of confident going down here because I didn't think that that team would grab it again. I thought that they would just walk in the ring because it's pretty close to fish farms. But if they didn't have that option and you were in this situation and a team grabbed gravity cannon back up like say the, the circle was more closer uh over here if they gravity cannon back up and then they sit at the top of this hill and kind of kind of gatekeep you you're in a bit of a tough situation so always be looking to remember like where other teams are and always be looking to see like you know if I do this, if I commit to this, will I get punished for it? Because right here, I was trying to finish this, this Bangalore off, but unfortunately she did get a battery off and now I'm kind of stuck. I'm low ammo and I have this Bangalore in front of me. So, you know, what do I do? Well, I just end up gatekeeping her. There's no real reason for me to overcommit to her. Uh, right now, the zone is about to close. She has to come to me. So I, I just want to keep pressure on her. I don't want to let her have like, you know, too much time to relax. Obviously, I can't run at her because, you know, then it's a straight up fight. And I don't have any advantages and it's not really worth it. So I just throw some abilities out and I just, you know, I just want to keep her kind of aware that I'm doing this. And this is something right here that you guys always need to be doing in your games. If you shoot it somebody if you throw an ability out at them and they know where that came from and then you break the line of sight like she backed off behind the trucks she's healing she doesn't know where i am so i immediately reposition and this is something you guys always need to be looking to do in your own games is as soon as something pops off like that always reposition because now uh the bangalore does not know where i am and i'm able to just get a really nice uh kind of shots off on the side here and i was able to finish this off I do have to go for a swap because I am I was low ammo, but it's it's always fine to swap guns mid game. Don't be afraid to swap guns mid game. And then I have to get back in ring, which is a little sketchy because it is round three closing. So it does hurt a lot. This is the next thing that I want to kind of talk about once I, I pop this med kit here is don't be afraid to use utility to get back in the zone. Now, a lot of people would say like, oh, I need to save this ultimate because it's a big ultimate in a fight. You're not going to be in that fight if you can't get to zone. So don't be afraid to throw some some abilities out, get back in the zone safely and make sure that you can live. Okay, but now jumping forward ahead a little bit because all I was really doing was kind of looting and just kind of making sure that that team was still in fish farms. Right now, finishing off this game strong isn't too rough here because it is a 1v1. If you can see right here, this is kind of a rough 
spot, but there is a mobile respawn right here. So that Revenant did actually end up dying to ring. After my teammate knocked him, he did get thirsted by the zone and they weren't able to kind of fully reset. So right now I know it's a 1v1. As I rock up here, I do notice that the lifeline is sitting right here. So I know that they're in a rough situation. They're in low ground compared to me. Uh, it's a lifeline so that they don't really have uh, any mobility options. Like they can't pathfind or grapple at me. So if they don't have anything like that and they're on low ground, and they have to come to you eventually. Like if you look at zone, they're they're not going to be in. There's no way that the zone pulls over here. The zone's probably going to pull somewhere like over here or over here. So right now I have zone advantage. I have height advantage. I have a lot of things on this lifeline. And this is something that people would do is they just overcommit to this and they potentially get one clipped or they wouldn't make it across and they would die or they'd get you know, there's a lot of different things that could happen. So right here, I just want to throw some shots at that lifeline to let her know, like, hey, I know where you are. But right now, like, I'm just holding this little height right here because, like, there's, there's a little bit of cover with this this box right here or this little cylinder canister thingy. So I have a nice little head glitch that I can play. If they peek out, I can crouch down. I can back off this. I can drop off height. There's a lot of different options here. And that's why I always say that high ground is king because there's so many different options you can do with high ground. I just want to let this lifeline know that I still know where she is. She can't rotate. If she backs off anywhere, I'm going to see it. If she leaves that little like cover of the, the yellow sign there, I'm going to see it. She tried to, tried to sky name me, but it didn't work. So as soon as I, I pop my ability because of Mad Maggie's scan, I can see her. And I'm going to be honest here. I don't know what she was doing. She was just kind of crouch walking and had no idea. I don't even think she knew what her plan was, but I was able to get a nice one clip off here. And because I was able to play height and really see what her plan was and be aware of that, I was able to get a really nice nice win off here and you know go for the thirds because she had gold res and I was still able to come out with the win even though my teammate did kind of go into zone he kind of threw a little bit but stayed calm worked on my fundamentals and I was able to carry the game and actually funny enough this guy was a, a viewer uh, he's seen the channel before so if uh you know blink if you're watching what's up man how's it going drop a comment down below but I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and learned something new because doing these 1v2s and then taking that further into 1v3s, even in ranked, isn't as hard as people make it seem like it is. You break it down, fundamental stuff like that, you can really start to carry games. And even if your teammates, you know, quote unquote, throw the game, it doesn't matter. If they throw themselves into a fight and die, you can still win just with proper positioning, proper uh, fundamentals in Apex. So I wanted to bring this video out here to show you guys that it is still possible to do stuff like that. So thank you guys all for watching. If you guys are a fan of this kind of stuff, if you guys want to see more in the future, don't forget to smash smash that like and subscribe button to stay up to date. We've got some absolute bangers coming up for season 13 because that is right around the corner. Thank you guys all for watching. Once again, I'm 8 Second Gaming and I will see you guys in the next one.